In this video, we want to consider explicit type conversion, specifically using the int function. And by explicit conversion, we mean that we, the programmers, say precisely how data of one type should be converted to data of another type. And we've seen implicit conversion before. So we discussed how if we have an arithmetic expression, say the integer 19 plus the float 1.0, the way Python carries this out, it implicitly converts the integer 19 to a float and then carries out this operation. Before getting into the details of explicit conversion, let's consider this. Let's say we have a variable age underscore s and it is assigned the string consisting of the characters or digits 1, 9. And let's have another variable, age underscore i, that is assigned the integer value 19. In our code, we might have a statement like print age underscore s, and we see the output 19. We might have a statement like age underscore i as the argument of a print statement that also generates the output 19. If we're the user looking at this, there's absolutely no difference in that output. And the user doesn't care that one was generated by printing a string and the other was generated by printing an integer. They don't care. But we, as the programmers, we do care. For example, if we took age underscore s and tried to add one to it, that doesn't work. If we took age underscore i, which is an integer, and add one to that, well, no problem. We could add one to an integer, but we can't add one to a string. As we saw in the previous video, the input function returns the user's input as a string, but what if we want to consider that input or deal with that input as an integer instead of as a string? Well, we can use the int function to convert a string to an integer, provided that string looks like an integer. And we'll see what we mean by that in a second. So let's give some examples here. So this is the int function. And it can take a string argument, let's say the string 19. So we're just entering the string literal there. And it actually returned the integer 19. So we could put a literal argument there. We could put a variable there to show that this is actually working. Let's take that int of age underscore s and add one to that. And now that works. Recall that if we just try to directly add one to that variable, it doesn't work because that variable is a string. The int function could also have an integer argument. And no surprise here it simply returns that integer value. So let's recall that line. And if we add 1 to that, we get 20. If we have a float argument, let's say 19.4, then the int function merely discards the fractional part. It takes a float, and it discards the fractional part, and we're left with the remaining integer value. And this is not rounding off. It's merely discarding the integer value. To make that a little bit more clear, let's take 19.999. If that's the argument to the int function, the 0.999 is discarded, and we get 19. OK, if the int function can take as arguments integers and floats and strings, how about an argument that's a string that looks like a float? So let's try that. Let's call the int function. We'll pass it a string argument. And the string is 19.4. And hitting return now, no, that didn't work. The string that's passed to the int function has to look like an integer value. And we'll see in the next video what we could do to work around this. But before moving on to the next video, let's consider a couple more things. First, let's say we're confident the user, when prompted for an age, will enter it as an integer. And we want to store that age as an integer. How can we do that? Well, first of all, I want to note that we can nest 
functions. And by that, we mean that we could call one within another. So here's what I have in mind. Let's say we want to get an age from the user, and it's going to be an integer. We want an integer age, but we will get this from the input function. So there we are going to call the input function first. So the input function, being the innermost function, will be called first. It will prompt the user for some input, and let's give as the prompt the string enter an age. That will return whatever the user typed. Uh, we will assume that it's something that looks like an integer value, but it's returned as a string. That then is subsequently passed to the int function, and then that converts the string to an integer. So enter an age, let's go with 19. And what is age now, that variable? It's an integer. We can print the age and see 19. We can treat that as an integer and add to it, subtract from it, multiply, or do anything with it that we would normally do with an integer. So that's how we can get an integer into our program from the user's input. Now let's consider something that's really an aside, not all that important to us. But let's say we have a function call where we're using the int function. We passed it 4.32 times 10 to the 24th. And what do you think we'll get when we hit return now? Well, the result's kind of surprising. We get 4, 3, 1, lots of 9s, and then some garbage digits at the end. So recall that floats are approximate numbers. They use 64 bits to represent their value, and we convert to an int, that's an exact value, but it didn't have exact information to begin with. So this is just something to file away in the back of your mind, and you're probably not likely to encounter this perhaps ever dealing with these large floats converted to integer. But this does further demonstrate the approximate nature of floats and the exact nature of integer values within Python.